Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to improvise freely on the guitar, how I recommend working on it, and why I think it is the secret weapon to not only enhancing guitar solos and improvisations, but really enhancing our confidence, our accuracy, and our understanding of music for playing even arranged music on the classical guitar or any other style. So let's do it. So when I say improvise freely, I really mean improvise freely. So this is very atonal at times. It's really not thinking about chords or scales or notes or anything. It's just this feeling of like, I'm gonna play a note, I'm gonna play whatever note. I'm gonna play all over the guitar and I want it to feel good. I want it to be a real improvisation and something I'm taking seriously, but just having that feeling of, okay, any note is okay, and I'm just gonna go for it. So there are a few milestone moments I can look back on in my guitar playing where I felt like it was a huge turning point in setting me free or getting me to the next level or just going much deeper uh, to, to somewhere that I didn't realize was possible. This kind of improvisation was one of them. I was fortunate enough to have um, a college professor who was really big on free improvisation um, and we were p playing a lot of what a lot of people would call free jazz um, at the time but what I found out is that the effect was just enormous for my guitar playing in general for my technique for my interpretation of classical music on classical guitar for just my accuracy and for my playing in tonal situations in a key in pop music in jazz music it just really changed just shifted something turned on a light and i really feel like it's it's something important to exercise for anyone interested in improvising but but really i have almost all my students do this and i have classical guitarists do it as well so i'll go a little deeper on showing you what i'm talking about and how to work on it so i have a list here of a bunch of things that i could think of that i think um for why i think it enhances one's playing um, and why it's so good to work on. And this is not in any particular order, but uh, the first one is that it can start to get us used to the idea that that bad notes are okay, or even that there are not bad notes. We we get less afraid to play the wrong note uh, if we improvise again in a scale. We get used to this feeling of of like, oh, it's okay if if things go a little haywire, because this is kind of practicing haywire on purpose. We want to be, be comfortable with haywire. If you practice off road, you're not going to be scared on the road that you might go off, right? So this is practicing off road and, and getting used to that type of terrain and, and embracing it and getting comfortable with it. So we start to get this idea of like, oh, we're, we're not scared now to play play a wrong note or a bad note, and we could actually really use that to our advantage or do something more interesting if that happened accidentally or if we go there on purpose. So that's one thing, less scared about playing wrong notes. The second thing is just straight up the physical dexterity. Uh, with the way I want you to practice this, I'm, I'm gonna go into detail here, but one of the ways is that I want you to play constant notes, just constant random notes at a pace. It doesn't have to be fast, but like eighth notes, constant notes, um, at a pace. This is so helpful for our dexterity and just trying to play anything with any finger, any note, any string. It's actually very creative to do this. Um, but the physical dexterity that happens and just our flexibility where your fingers are just getting ready, kind of getting used to just needing to play a note. So when you need to play something that is the right note or in an arrangement or in a solo you transcribed or whatever, it's a lot easier to reach to those. Um, you might, of course, just kind of do familiar patterns when you're improvising, but if you do it more with this free improvisation, you're gonna wanna switch it up and try to reach maybe somewhere with your pinky or reach somewhere with to another string, skipping a couple strings or something. But I think just the physical dexterity of this is uh, massively helpful. And I do a little bit of it in my warm up routine all the time. And I wish I could do you know even more. I think just playing this way is, is just incredibly fun. Number three, I kind of just combined it with number two, but it's just that it forces you to be ready to play any note at any moment okay so we just are used to something's going to keep happening and we just are going to keep playing so we're not needing to pause because we don't know what to play we just are jumping to something 
Number four is that I, because it's so open and so free, you literally can play anywhere. And I think that this is really helpful to get us kind of familiar with just what it feels like to play anywhere on the guitar without worrying about what's my scale shape there? What are the chord tones there? How do I map this out? You just literally, hey, I just want to play some frets up here. And like I said, you know what I'm playing right now, it's like, even if it's buzzing up there or whatever, I just am like exploring. And we gotta let it sound crunchy because that's part of the good conditioning. You know, you might even think, chose those two notes. I'm doing, I'm not doing the constant notes right now, but just showing you, oh, I'm just gonna jump around. Now, a lot of you might do kind of similar things like this already or if you're noodling but usually if we're not doing this on purpose we're just kind of playing in some scale or we might play some chromatic notes this is really explicitly trying to explore interesting stuff that is totally free on purpose number five is that it exposes us to chromaticism so again if we're not playing in a key um, it's good to get those in our ears and our fingers and our hands when we're playing tonally we can explore chromaticism better it's a little different than the one where i said we're ready to play you know it's okay to play bad notes or wrong notes this is actually intentional chromaticism so what we're you'll be much more comfortable and, and even interested your taste kind of will change being interested in adding something kind of chromatically interesting even on a quarter in a scale that is just a triad or in a pop song or something like that which you may or may not want that sound but if you wanted to explore that you'd know how and you'd feel comfortable kind of reaching between good notes by playing chromatic notes in between Okay, number six is that I think it redefines for us what music needs to be uh, to some degree. You know, what makes, what, what music needs to be to be good music or what's important in music. It really deconstructs uh, the idea of music being mostly the right notes. I mean, we spend, we fixate on that so much. What's the right chord tones? What's the right scale? What am I supposed to play? Am I, you know, we talked about that earlier, maybe playing a bad note. But this really brings it back and say, okay, well, uh, is this, you know, can this be good music too? Of course it can, of course it can. So if it's atonal, um, you know, we start to think more about maybe rhythmic structures or just the, the phrasing or the timbre or the dynamics, you know, it, these things still exist if we're outside of a key. Now in this free improvisation, it truly is supposed to be free. So you can go in and out of keys, but if you're kind of, if you end up just sticking with some kind of scale, then you're not really doing the exercise. So I like to go in and out. Sometimes you'll find yourself there if you, are familiar with something you're going to end up playing it a little bit maybe but then you're just exploring around it so i love this feeling of it kind of uh redefining for us what makes music music and makes us focus on those other things that can often get ignored which again are like timbre and tone and uh the rhythms and the dynamics and uh, maybe just straight up texture so it's kind of note selection but what kind of texture if you're playing you know is do i care about what exact harmony that is or am i trying to just get a cluster kind of collection of notes happening um you know so if i play this yes i could say it's like a minor chord So I feel like I can just kind of go to anything if I'm not feeling it, whatever, just switch it up. The timing can change. Everything can shift. There are just way fewer boundaries. So number, I keep jumping the gun. Number eight is kind of related to that last one. I think that um, it's just about when you remove the pitches being the important thing, uh, your feel, just your feel becomes one of the things that is so obvious that needs to be a focus that needs to to be there for it to to feel good um so whatever that means to you you know what your feel is while you're playing what that what that rhythmic feel is whether you're swinging or it's straight or it's funky or anything like that number nine is that reaching for ways to to make it interesting when we do this enough so so you might at first just you literally can play anything and it's so open but I wanna like it as I go, you know, I wanna use taste. So you might just do stuff like this. I'm doing this constant note thing for now.
So, but but you do it enough, and I might slow down a little. Show I like to do this kind of jumping around quite a bit, where I jump to another string. By trying to keep it interesting after working on this for a while, that affects our tonal playing. In our tonal playing, in, in the right scale, in the right key, if you're playing in that kind of context, um, I think we're, we're much more adventurous in trying to jump somewhere. And I don't just mean using chromatic notes, but I mean like um, switching up our, our even tonal melodic ideas to get used to the and feel okay with like oh yeah i'm just gonna reach for something because it's totally fine to just reach for something because that's all we're doing when we're doing this exercise number 10 i kind of mentioned this before but it's its own thing and that's really that i think it changes our taste in a good way we're used to hearing more notes it's richer it's denser um i think that's at first it might sound really like why am i doing this is this really valuable this is not tonal or whatever if that's happening we need to reach for what can we do to make it interesting? But I think that by playing random notes or atonal notes or just anywhere and everywhere, uh, it changes our taste. It makes it kind of, it's, it is more dense, it's, it's more rich, and you might um, go listen to some 20th century classical music or something after doing this and, and starting to hear some of the dissonance in, in pieces like um, Schoenberg and or 12 tone music or just intentionally a tonal music not that you have to like that stuff but um you'll start to hear the musicality in something that isn't necessarily harmonious and tonal all right and the 11th thing i wrote down is just that it makes us more ad adventurous okay this list is definitely like repeating itself but um it's just i, I kind of brainstormed okay what are what are all these benefits why is it so great i think it makes us more adventurous and in this case i just mean to try things that we maybe wouldn't have tried so this includes in writing songs or whatever just like being a little having a little more resilience for something not being um like your favorite sound or super tasty at first and, and exploring and just being okay with that crunchiness so i think it it makes us more adventurous and interesting. All right, so I also made a little list here of what this will not help you with, so I don't want you to think it's you know everything. It's just really cool for those reasons that I listed there. But what it will not get you, of course, it's not gonna help you play in a key. It's not gonna help you understand theory. It's kind of why it's helpful, though, that we push those things away for a little bit. It's not gonna help you with improvising over chords or targeting chord tones. Um, which is a great thing to work on in improvisation, but just something different. It's not gonna help with phrasing with the constant note version where you're just playing constant eighth notes or constant 16th notes or quarter notes. It's not gonna help with your phrasing. It'll help with a lot of that other stuff. But I also want you to do a version with phrasing uh, where you can just play anything you want. That's where it gets really interesting, where you can say, can I make music out of this? So there's gonna be really two versions of it. However, I really want you to do that constant no version because I think it's fantastic um, as an exercise. And then the exercise with the do any kind of phrasing that you want, that exercise is more a kind of a compositional exercise. You know, what can I do? How can I change this to, to make it feel right? um structurally you know from where i came from what did i say how can i say something that responds to that how can i say something that relates to that so that constant note version if you want to do slow quarter notes fine if you want to do eighth notes fine um whatever if you want to do 16th notes i don't care it's just constant notes and just start to explore what can you do that's interesting so if i go just playing constant pace get overwhelmed or don't know what to do this is what I call treading water just start repeating notes or this is considered part of it right you can this is allowed to just play one note so treading water is kind of like let me hang out for a sec okay now let me reach for something notice I'm changing dynamics a little Accenting is something that is that I'm more aware of. So I'm gonna switch it up to kind of what I like to do. I like to be kind of right on the edge to challenge myself. So throwing in slurs, you don't have to. Uh, 
Um, I a long time ago I transcribed a Pat Metheny solo. It's from the solo uh, from the song Third Wind. Anyway, and he was he he was playing and he's doing these things. Uh, I was trying to do it without that scrape in there, but and during this, like you know, these few moments in the song, I'm like, oh my gosh, he's just he's just doing, it. he's just playing freely. It doesn't matter. Just connect from one thing to the next, and then back into whatever. So uh, in in that context, in jazz, it's like really useful for that reason. So that constant eighth note thing is important for that because I, I got I was reaching for things. Um, if I let myself do any phrasing, it gives me a break. It lets me stop when I kind of like get uh, get kind of maxed out on where what I can do. But if I'm trying to kind of constantly play, it really expands uh, that ability to just be ready any moment. Then when we pause in music, it's because we want to for the musical statement, not because we just ran out of something to play or somewhere to reach a note. So the last demonstration, I just want to say, if you're playing in a tonal context, like just in a scale, let's just take something real common, like the blue scale off A here on the fifth fret. If you're playing in that, you can add some of this weirdness around it. I'm not saying you're going to want that uh, for for the note selection that you want, but um, it's it's a fun challenge to try to kind of go out and come back in. So it's just kind of an extra benefit that I think might come into your playing if you embrace this exercise. <laughs> of trying to play around with like a tonal area and then do some weird stuff around it so it's not easy to to get something you want out of it but it's just a great challenge it's a great challenge for that exact reason try to do something tasteful that isn't about um, I need to play all the right notes in the right place and and have it sound exactly like I want it to so again that adventurousness a little bit so question for you have you practiced this way before have you even thought of doing this have you heard of it maybe you think it sounds like a dumb idea or you don't like the way it sounds when I do it um, let me know give it a try if you're interested let me know how it feels or how it affects your playing i would love to hear from you anytime and i hope to see you in another lesson in the future and happy practicing